Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I, I want to voice my extreme frustration that this committee has not prioritized expansion of the Tahoe Basin categorical exclusion to the entire U.S. forest system. Uh, that measure provided a categorical exclusion from NEPA for forest thinning projects up to 10,000 acres under certain circumstances. It received broad bipartisan support. It was signed into law by President Obama in 2016. Since then, it's increased the timber yield on the federal forests in the Tahoe Basin from 1 million to 9 million board feet a year. It has tripled the treated acreage in the basin. It literally saved the city of South Lake Tahoe from the Caldor Fire that wiped out the town of Grizzly Flats that sadly wasn't covered by this law. It's taken the environmental review process for forest thinning projects at Tahoe from an average of four and a half years down to just a few months, and the environmental reports from an average of 850 pages down to a few dozen. Forest Service Chief uh, Randy Moore recently confirmed to this committee that we've now lost a quarter of the entire U.S. forest system to catastrophic wildfire in the past decade. A quarter, gone. UCLA recently documented that wildfires in California in the single year of 2020 produced twice as much carbon dioxide as California has prevented from all of its destructive and expensive CO2 restrictions since 2003 combined. Now here we have a law that's proven its effectiveness in reducing the severity and frequency of catastrophic fire beyond any question, and yet it took this committee a year to take it up and has not yet taken it up on the House floor. So I ask, if we can't get a simple bill using a proven process out of the House in the span of two years, I sincerely question the likelihood of these bills being enacted in the closing days of the 118th Congress. I strongly endorse all of the measures before us today, but I can't understand why we've not pressed to extend an effective policy already proven in Tahoe to protect the rest of our forests while we still have forests to protect. Now, this is no longer theoretical discussion. NEPA was passed 50 years ago with the promise that it would improve our forest environment. And after 50 years, I think we're entitled to ask, how's the forest environment doing? The answer's all around us. Our forests have become morbidly overgrown. They're falling victim to disease, pestilence, drought, and ultimately catastrophic wildfire. Uh, you know, I've, I've watched the, the left obsess over a one degree increase in temperature over a century but they couldn't care less that their policies are making it impossible for a growing number of families to, to heat their homes in the winter and, and, and cool them in the summer. The ranking member's remarks brought home the, the broader issues that are before us today. You know, he and his ilk have had their way in California for years. And the result is chronic water shortages in one of the most water abundant regions of our country, utterly devastated forest land, chronic traffic congestion in a state that once had the finest highway system in the world, one of the highest prices for basic necessities like electricity, water, gasoline, and housing in the entire country, and, and now a record number of people voting with their feet and leaving for the other 49 states. That's what my friend's policies have done to California, and they're now doing the same thing to our country. The point of this hearing is that Republicans are trying to restore the policies that produced affordable energy, abundant water, healthy and resilient forests, and the prosperity that we once took for granted. And let's remember, when Donald Trump left office less than four years ago, America was energy independent for the first time in our lifetimes, and a gallon of gasoline averaged $2.39 a gallon. By the way, it was 519 at the Sacramento airport on Monday. So that's the basic question before this committee today, and it's the overriding question before the American people in 55 days. Now, Mr. Pugh, how much of our crumbling infrastructure would you say is directly attributable to the costs uh, imposed by endlessly time-consuming and ultimately cost-prohibitive government regulations? Pardon me while I hit my microphone. <laughs> Can you repeat the very first part of that question? How much of our crumbling infrastructure would you say is due to the, uh, the regulations that we're, we're dealing with today? Uh, well, I guess we have to put that into perspective. Um, I'm also working on the American Society of Civil Engineers, the report card committee, uh, which comes out. I've got very limited time, Mr. Pugh. With our nation's what, grade. A lot, a little. Understood. Um, obviously, uh, from my perspective, it impacts us a lot. Ms. Ms. Reams, let me ask you, uh, uh, what do you foresee as the quality of life in America if we continue much farther down the road we're on? 
Sir, could you please repeat that? Let's start here. What do you foresee is the quality of life for Americans if we continue much farther down the road we've been on? With declining infrastructure, I think a poorer quality of life. 